Okay, right, Vindy. Let's quickly look at Nas before you click out of this video. If you're watching me maybe for the first time and maybe you're frustrated, you're thinking, oh, this Nas dead thing, maybe there's a secret and there's something that I'm missing out. Guys, one common thing that I have seen with a whole lot of traders, okay, it's risk management. You guys don't apply risk management. You guys don't, don't calculate your risk. You guys don't calculate your lot size. I don't know. Maybe it's because you watch a lot of uh, Instagram uh, mentors or uh, us on YouTube and you're thinking, no, let me just place 10 trades because that guy was doing it and they didn't have a stop loss. Why is it that it only works for mentors? Only mentors can get away with that. And, and, and you on the other side, you are not... You are not uh, being profitable. Of course, there's something that you're be, you're not being shown, guys. If you have a one thousand dollars account, okay, you can't just risk everything on one trade. What if the trade doesn't work out? Let's cut that nonsense of saying, "Nah, my strategy, yeah, it's a must. It's going to go down, guys. This is the market." You need to humble yourself, approach it from that angle to say, with this $1,000, I am only going to risk 2% or 3%, depending on your risk appetite. I'm only going to risk maybe $20 per trade or $30 if you're risking 3%, like that, okay? Not my entire account. And... Why are you doing that? So that when you lose, 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 lose frequently, you're not blowing out your account. People say, I've blown my account, I've blown this much. You were trying to do what your mentor showed you on the other side. And the mentor was not implementing that because they can afford to lose the money and sell classes over and over again to fund the account. That is something that I have to say. If you are a mentor and you're watching this and I'm killing your business, maybe, maybe click out. But people need to know these things. Okay, That is the most important aspect. We can't teach you how to be psychologically stable and all that. But the one thing that I can show you is to calculate your position to implement your risk properly. Okay? I'm just saying it from a good heart. Well, at least try to do that. Um, yeah, if you are new, once more, maybe consider watching other videos that I've done. There's a video where I show how to actually do that. Maybe I'll link it down in the comment section or in the pinned comments uh, down here. So do check that video out. See if you were not doing the opposite of what I shared in that particular video. See if you can blow an account if you follow that. Trading is hard. And people don't say that. The hardest part is sticking to risk management. You can analyze, anyone can analyze. You guys are good analysts, way better than me. Okay, way better than me. Right? But you fail to make profits consistently because two, three, four bad trades, they wipe all your account. And the next thing you complain, oh, uh, your things are not working. Uh, you are a bad analyst. Uh, I've been doing this for almost six years, right? How do I survive risk management? Do you want me to lie? Hell no, I don't gain anything from lying. Apply risk management. Otherwise, let's start with our NASDAQ analysis. All right, starting from weekly, if we look at this from a trend line perspective, let's start by highlighting uh, the key structures. We'll start with this one. This was broken around that point. If we were to more uh, support and resistance, let's say this is our resistance on top there. And then let's say this is our support around that point, okay? Or we can take this one now. If you know the five finger rule, we can actually use that five finger rule around that point. That is now a nice uh, area. So where are we in space? You ask yourself, are we near support or are we near resistance? Of course, we are near this support. So if you are a buyer, if you are a buyer, you would look for opportunities to buy. But if you're a seller, you look maybe for sell opportunities around about that particular point. Okay. However, if you are a breakout trader and you are looking at this particular trend line, already the breakout took place. And this is a retest of some sort. A retest was this bullish candle, this red one going up. That was your, your retest. And this could be a continuation probably back down. But 
how much room do you have to the downside? You don't have much because you're technically not too far away from support. So we could see price coming down a little bit to this particular level, okay? So that is why I'm saying by, by highlighting your, uh, your zones nicely, your support and resistance, you're able to take that decision as to whether you can buy or sell based on, uh, sorry, how you have drawn your, um, your, 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 your structures in that, in, in that sense, okay? So if I move this one, Let's say maybe I move it back to this one that was established before. You can see that there's still a little bit of room for sellers to push lower. That is why I'm saying it depends on how you've drawn your, 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 your structures. Okay. So if we move again, move to a different time frame, you can see that break took place, a retest. How much room do you have to the downside? As sellers, you only have this much of a room before you hit the next support. So there isn't much that you can do if you are looking at this. But if you are looking at the trend line, you are looking at the breakout, maybe a little bit of a continuation to the downside, okay? And maybe another person could be looking at it from this angle, okay? Different breakout. Where price was doing that, maybe you are looking at that and thinking that is a channel, a bullish channel to be specific. And price broke out and we're most likely to see maybe a continuation. But once more, I'd like to gather evidence either around this or either around the zone before I can start actually buying towards the sell structure. This is my buy structure. This is my sell structure. Okay. So that is why I've highlighted those uh, areas first so that I can I can uh, know what to do at what, what level, okay? So if I move down once more, this is just going to be much clearer. And you can see that here we are having a rejection candle of some sort. It, uh, it is actually happening around the breakout point. Once more, if you're a breakout trader and you're looking to buy the breakout of this trend line back to the upside, that will be your condition that okay broke out and we have this price have been stalling around this okay so that is a valid point and i see a nice uh pin bar around that point which is a nice reversal nice signal candle this particular candle right there that nice pin bar that's a nice rejection that took place there okay so that could be a trigger for short-term trades also maybe midway or let's say a little bit lower stop loss somewhere there that will be a nice one for short term short term trades okay depending on how the market opens if it doesn't give us a gap we could find that nice short term trade from here back to the upside that is a quick 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 trade however should the violation take place the violation of this particular pin bar take place we're going to see maybe a uh, buy others starting to accumulate from this particular particular zone that we highlighted from the weekly chart. So maybe even harmonic traders could start sort of uh, gaining interest when they start seeing price pushing a little bit lower. Because if we're to look at it from this B and that, that is not a valid harmonic pattern, right? But as soon as this is clear, this is violated. So if you, you have a trade and then you hit a stop loss on this pin bar, we're most likely to find another opportunity around that that correction so after that d point after the violation of the b point we could see this d pinning out which happens to be exactly on that zone that we highlighted that is another possibility for quick buys it's either you get this one here from the pin bar with that stop down there move down as soon as it gets back to this that will be our first target that is a one nice one is two one as soon as it steps out back to the XB trend line, almost the breakout of that XB trend line on top here, then we're going to find another TP2 round about that. And TP3 could be around that particular high. That is for this quick, quick buy. However, if this one fails, I could possibly update uh, the trade maybe on, 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 on the, the Telegram channel. Do make sure that you check that Telegram Telegram channel. So I'm going to to, to sort of do updates for the upcoming week. So that's another possibility. If this one doesn't work, this one could potentially give it. But 
Remember what I said at the beginning of this video, risk is a specific portion of your account. And then if I'm risking 20 or if I'm risking 200 or $70 on this one, then by the time it gets here, I know I've already made twice that amount, okay? I've already made back twice that. So if it decides to take off and I don't have a TP, I could make more, but at that point I've risked a very, very small portion. So make sure that you control how much you lose. And when you control how much you lose, also the amount that you're going to make is going to be controlled because you will have TPs and you will also, also have SS. When you see something spiraling wild, there are no stop losses and all that, that is not a good sustainable way to trade, okay? This is like a business. You need to control your losses in that sense. So if you are a buyer, we could see buy orders coming from here. If you are a seller, maybe after this particular point, we could see short-term sales also coming. That is why it depends on whether you're looking at it from short-term or you're looking at it from long-term. And in this case, I'm looking at possible setups from short term of course i'll keep on updating this video throughout the week do make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on other videos otherwise see if i've said something to offend you otherwise i don't know but they've watched this video up to here hit the like even when i've offended you and if i said something cool drop me a comment let me know um if this video was nice and do make sure that you share the video otherwise let me let me just leave it here. I will do another video during the week showing other trades uh, on uh, intraday. Sharp, 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 sharp.